Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 176. Please turn to it. Page number 176, problem number 170. Now before we actually start the problem, before we get going, I want to make a note or more note of something here. And if you have not watched the video that I'm about to tell you right now, I would like you to compare this problem that we are about to do, number 170, with the problem that we already did, problem number 111. You're going to find you're going to find that problem on page number 167. Take a look at that problem on page 167, number 111. Something that a problem that we did on day number 301. Today is day number 339. If you have not watched that video already, 301, I want you to stop this video, I want you to watch that video first, understand that problem, how to do it, and then try to do this problem on your own, number 170. Do it, try to do it in your own afterwards, and then compare your work that you do to yourself with the work that we are about to do together. Do you understand? You will get a lot more out of it that way. Anyway, so just give me one second and we will get going. There we go. So I'm taking it for granted that, uh, that that by this time in the story, you have already watched day number 301 because they are very similar questions. Here is what we are told. We are told, question here is how many non-zero digits does D have? And D we are told, D we are told equals 1 over 2 raised to 3 times 5 raised to 7. 1 over 2 raised to 3 times 5 raised to 7, which in turn can be written as 1 over 2 raised to 3 times 5 raised to 3 times 5 raised to 4. Why not? Why not? Of course. We just broke, we just break this break up this power 7 into 3 and a 4. 3 plus 4 is 7. Now 2 raised to 3 times 5 raised to 3 can be written as 10 raised to 3. So we can, we can continue this thing. This can be written as 1 over 10 raised to 3 times 5 raised to 4. Or better yet, we can break, let's, let's start from here so we have more room. So we can write this as 1 over 10 raised to 3 times 1 over 5 raised to 4. Which in turn can be written as 1 over 10 raised to 3 times 1 over 5 raised to 2 times 1 over 5 raised to 2. Now let's find out what 5, 5 raised to 2 is. 1 over 5 raised to 2 is what we're looking at. 1 over 5 raised to 2, which is same as 1 over 25. 1 over 25, of course, is same as the same as 4 out of 100. You multiply the top and bottom by 4. You multiply top and bottom by 4. 1 out of 25 is same as 4 out of 100. Of course. 1 out of 25 is 4 percent and, and 4 out of 100 can be written as 0 0.04 this quantity we know this quantity 1 over 1, 1, rest, 1 over 5 raised to 2 1 over 5 squared boils down to 0 0.04 and 1 over 10 raised to 3 is just 1 over 1000 1 over 1000 of course we know 1 over 10 raised to 3 is simply 1 over 1000 which of course we know is 0 0.001. 1 raised to 10 is 0 0.1. 1 raised to, not, not 1 raised to, 1 over 10 is 0 0.1. 1 over 100 is 0 0.01. 1 over 1000 is going to be 0 0.001. So that's what this quantity is. So we end up with 0 0.001 times 1 over 5 squared, which we just found out is 0 0.04. 0 0.04 times another one, point zero four. We are almost done. And now we have to find the product of these three quantities. That's what it is. Let's do this thing on the top. 
Let's do it on the top. I really don't want to erase anything, but let's do it here. So this quantity is what we're looking at here. Well, first thing we have to figure out is how much is 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is very simple. We have to figure out 0 0.04 times 0 0.04. Well, 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 4 is 16. What do we do after that? What do we do after that? Well, we have two decimal places here. Here's our decimal places. One, two. I think I'm going to change this red marker that I've been meaning to change for the longest time and I keep procrastinating. And if I don't do it, every time I pick it up, I think about changing it and every time I say to myself I'll do it later and I never get around to it. There. I'll have a brand new one and it will be out of my system because it's been going on for too long. There we go. The tip of that thing is all ruined. I feel much better. Okay, so here's our decimal place. We move it two places right here. Same thing here. It's decimal place one two. It has it has rather it has there are, it has two decimal places one two. So two and two is four. So we have our answer sixteen. The decimal place is here. We move it four places one two three four. Decimal ends up here, and it ends up with point zero zero one six. In other words. 0 0.04 times 0 0.04 is 0 0.0016. Now we still have to take care of this part. And then we have, and now I'm going to erase this part so we can have some room here. And then we have, and then we have this part 0 0.001 times 0 0.001 times 0 0.001. Well, 1 times 16, again, is just 16, so we get 16 one more time, and now we count the decimal places one more time, and that's what it is. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 so far, and then we have 5, 6, and 7. We have to move it 7 places, so here is the decimal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Decimal ends up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's our final answer. And the question was, how many non-zero digits does D have? How many non-zero digits does D have? Now, had we paid attention to the question from the very beginning, we really didn't have to do all of this work. How many non-zero digits is going to end up having? When we multiply these two quantities, how many non-zero digits is going to have? Only two. All of them are zero. All of them are zero. The non-zero digits are one is a non-zero digit and six is a non-zero digit. So the quantity D that we had before, whatever the D was in the beginning, how many non-zero digits does it have? When you, ex when you express that as a decimal, the answer is two. two. It has two non-zero digits, and the two non-zero digits are one and six. And the others, of course, were zero. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 171. Number 171. One hundred and seventy one. Two, four, five. I want to make sure that I didn't make a boo-boo. Two, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's right. Okay, let's do the next one. In the next problem, we have we are told that we have ten thousand gallon, one hundred and seventy-one. We have ten thousand gallons of 10,000 gallons of is, we are told, is 5% sodium chloride. We are, we are told that we have a, we have a tank full of 10,000 gallons of water, which is 5% sodium chloride by volume. We are told that 2,500 gallons of water evaporates. The question simply is, what is the new new concentration level? What is the new concentration level? Well, we started out with 5% solution and one quarter of the water evaporated. Now look, let's look at the answer choices here and you'll see how silly the answer choices are. A, B, C, D and E. Well, actually I did not write down all the answer choices here. 
So if you just give me one second. One and a quarter, three and seven five, one and a quarter, three and uh, three and three quarter. What else do we have? Six and a quarter, six and a quarter, six and a quarter, six and two third. These are all percentages. And finally, eleven and seven tenth percent. Do you notice anything? Do you notice anything silly? Do you, do you notice any answer choices that are simply uh, that, that, that are simply illogical? Answer choices that are moronic, idiotic. Look, we started out with a five-person solution. We started out with a five-person solution where we had ten thousand dollars, ten thousand gallons of water. If we start out with a ten thousand gallons of water, as the water evaporates, does the solution get stronger or weaker? Because the sodium chloride is not evaporating, you see, it's the water that is evaporating. So now, we started out with 10,000 gallons and 2,500 gallons evaporated. We are left with 7,500 7, gallons of water, but it's still, whatever the amount of sodium chloride was, was still there. So, is it going to be more concentrated or is it going to be weaker? Of course, the solution is going to be stronger. The solution is going to be now more concentrated. If we started out with 5%, the final concentration could not possibly be less than 5%. It cannot be less than 5%. Also, the pure logic tells us that if we start out with 5% solution, in order for that concentration to go from 5% to 10%, listen carefully, in order for that concentration to go from 5% to 10%, half of the water would have to evaporate. 5, 000, if the 5,000 gallons of this water had evaporated, we would have had 10% concentration. 5,000 gallons has not evaporated, only 2,500 gallons has evaporated. How in the world the final concentration can be 11 and 7 tenth? I don't know what the right answer is, but it's got to be either 6 and 2 third or 6 and a quarter. Let's do the work, shall we? Let's do the work. So first we have to figure out the amount of sodium chloride, and we are told that it is 5%. 5% of 10,000. The amount of sodium chloride, we are told, is 5% of 10,000. So, 10,000 gallons of the water. We know 10%. We know 10% of 10,000 is 1,000. One tenth of it. Therefore, therefore, 5%, this symbol means therefore, these three dots like this, that means therefore. Therefore, 5% of 10,000 would have to equal half of the amount, half of 1000 is 500. So we have 500 uh, gallon of sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. And how much water do we have? We have, we started out with, we started out with 10,000, 2,500 evaporated, so we have 7,500 gallons of water. And this is our sodium chloride. The amount of sodium chloride has not changed. Sodium chloride will still be the same thing, which is 500. That's it. That's our answer. And we want it in percentage. Since they want it in percentage, we have to multiply that quantity by 100. We have to multiply that quantity by 100. We're almost done. So, divide top and bottom by 100. If we divide top and bottom by 100, we can knock out the two zeros immediately. And we are left with 50 out. Well, there is also a zero here, don't forget that. So 50, 50 divided by 75 is 2 thirds, is 0.67. There you go. There you go. I need the room. It's 50, 500 actually over 75, which is same as 50 over 75 times 10, times 10, which is 2 third times 10, which is, this was 0 0.67, so it's going to be, this is, this is 0 0.67 times 10, or 6 and 2 third, so it's going to be 6 and 2 third, I'm making too much fuss about it, it's not 6 and a quarter, as you can clearly see, it's not 6 and a quarter, that's all. Let me, it, let me re redo this, uh, this, this work that, we, that I just did. I made a mess of it. I want to redo it. Let me redo it. 500 over 7,500. 
500 over 7500. Let's first get rid of these two zeros here. Divide top and bottom by 5. 7 has 1 5. 2 goes and joins the 5 becomes 25. And 25 has 5 5. So it's 1 over 15. 1 over 15. And then we multiply that quantity by 100. This will be simpler. Okay, watch what happens. We multiply that quantity by 100. So what we end up with is, what we end up is 100 over 15. I like it. I don't like dealing with decimal. I like this better. Watch what happens. I shouldn't have started going with the decimal part. It's just annoying. 100 over 15. How many 15 in 100? Do you know? How many 15 in 100? 75 makes 5. 75 makes 5 15s. 5 15s are 75. And how do I know that? Because 10 15s are 150. And half of 150 is 75. 75 plus a 15, if you have 75, if you add 15 to it, that's 90. So that is going to give us 6 15. 6 15 with the remainder of 10. The remainder of 10, which is being divided by 15. The remainder of 10, which is being divided by 15. There you go. And that 10 over 15 is same as 6 and 2 third percent. This amount is already in percentage because we multiplied by because we multiplied by 100, you see. The answer is 6 and 2 third. I made a lot of fuss about nothing at all. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.